Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete. Now in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about dry poured concrete versus wet poured concrete. And why, why I think dry poured concrete really isn't the way to go for you if you're a DIY or a homeowner. All right, so I just want to explain a couple things to you that you may or may not know about concrete. Now, concrete is made to be mixed with water because the cement part of the concrete, the gray cement fine powder in the concrete when mixed with water creates a paste. And that paste needs to get wrapped around the sand, get wrapped around the, the rocks, the aggregate. It's the glue that holds everything together. And if that paste isn't evenly distributed throughout the, the whole mix, whether it's two inches thick or three inches or four inches or six inches, if it's not evenly distributed, then your concrete's not going to be very strong. It might be strong, you know, at the top and not at the bottom. It might not be strong enough in the middle. So if you're just going to go sprinkle water on the surface of the concrete, you know, over and over again for multiple hours, you're not creating a paste in the mix. All you're doing is, is wetting the concrete. Some of the cement might not even hydrate. You know, hydration is the, the chemical reaction that takes place between the cement and the water. That, and it's the hydration is what makes the concrete harden. So how do you know you're evenly distributing moisture or water throughout the thickness of the slab if you're just sprinkling water on the surface, you're actually probably weakening the surface because you're adding so much water at the top and very little at the bottom and maybe just a little bit's getting into the middle. So you're creating a very uneven uh, uh, watered slab that's not going to be very strong. Now when you, when you pre-mix the concrete, whether it's from bags or out of a concrete truck like this, the concrete is mixed very, very evenly throughout every inch of the concrete, whether it's, like I said, this one's four inches thick, could be five inches, could be six inches, whatever. It's mixed evenly. So you've got an even water to cement ratio. Uh, water to cement ratio is very, very important with concrete. You, generally, the lower the water to cement ratio, it's, it's basically weighed, you know, the, the weight of water versus the weight of cement and there's a way of calculating that to get a water to cement ratio and that's that's how they determine strength of concrete and mixed designs um, but for you I mean all you need to know is the 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 mixture needs to be mixed evenly you can't have a lot of water at the surface and hardly any at the bottom and expect to get a really evenly strengthened concrete slab um, in a slab like this you can see it, it was pretty easy to to pull around the concrete was it was pretty easy to float out the edges and then screed the concrete off and then you can see my daughter Tia here is putting on a nice smooth surface with the bull float basically just going down and back and it's smoothing out the surface and getting it really really smooth versus you know when you dry pour concrete you got to dump the bags out dry you know, you kind of you kind of rake them around very similar probably although it's a little bit more workable when the concrete's mixed like this and then you gotta screed the concrete out you gotta you gotta kinda like saw the the screed back and forth and back and forth to kinda make the rocks settle and bring up the fines of the dry mix and then you gotta either either you know use a paint roller I guess to roll the surface to to maybe smooth out the the screeding marks. Some people don't even do that. They just leave the screeding marks, from what I've seen. And then you've got to be really careful to sprinkle the water on the surface, so you don't uh, you don't blow away the fines on the surface and, and and expose the aggregate. Whereas here, you mix you it's in, you mix up a the concrete with a paste like this. And when you mag float the surface, you bring some of that paste to the surface and you can see how smooth that gets on the surface. And then to go to finish it, I mean, we let this, after we poured and bow floated this, we let this set up for maybe 15 or 20 minutes. 
and then you can see Darren here as he's he's smoothing out the edges he's rounding that edge off with an edger the concrete here is still pretty soft and you can see how easy that is now to round out the edges versus if this was dry you'd be fighting the the, the rocks and the dry aggregate on the edges and trying to fill in any voids when you when you put an edger in like that you're basically moving rocks kind of towards the inside of the slab I guess because you're creating a space now between the 2x4 and the concrete a little bit with the edger now when it's when the concrete has moisture in it when it's wet mix like this that's pretty easy to do when it's dry mix you're really fighting the aggregate and now we're cutting a join in here because you know if this does want to crack we want to give it a place to crack and I let I actually let the concrete set up a little bit more after I edge it so it's kind of firm and it holds its shape really really well but you can still see how easy it is for me to joint that in a wet wet mix concrete versus a dry mix I don't even know I don't even think I could do this in a dry mix and create a really nice looking joint like this I think you'd have to maybe saw the joint in afterwards so I mean and I've done this for a long long time um, and I've even done a dry pour mix so I know it's going to be very difficult to cut a joint in like that versus when you have paste to work with see right there I'm scraping up a little bit of paste off the surface maybe to fill in a tiny little void in the surface so when you have moisture and paste at the surface to work with you can mag float the concrete out like this after it sets up a little bit and get ready to put some type of finish on it now this one we're gonna put just a light broom textured finish on it and then we're gonna leave like the picture frame look with the edger and the groover mark in the middle to give it you know a little bit more of an enhanced look than just just like a basic sand finish that you'd get out of a dry pour mix so I want you guys to tell me in the comments below you know do you think do you think pouring a little slab like this is difficult using wet poured concrete uh, whether you're going to use a bag mix or you know ready mix concrete versus say you know dumping dry bags of concrete in here leveling it out trying to get a nice finish on the surface and I don't even think you can get a broom finish a broom textured finish with a dry pour you'd just be basically brooming off the the fines of the surface and exposing the aggregate again so I think that's out of the question um, you can see we're not this isn't we're not it's not much effort here really to mag float the surface out and really work up some really nice cream on the surface so you can get a broom textured to it um, you could actually stamp this is if you were going to stamp a pattern in the surface this would be the time to stamp it and you can see I'm going to just basically got a con two foot concrete broom there just going to lightly drag it across the sur surface nice slow and easy and then that's going to be the finished finished slab right there you know that's a good nice non-slip type finish the the concrete here is going to be very very strong and durable throughout the entire mix because it was mixed evenly and then you know if we want to cure this thing after it after it dries up let's say the next day if we do want to cure make it cure slower and get even stronger we could just keep wetting wetting this down for a few days and not letting it dry out too fast you can see how easy it is just to drag a broom across the surface a really fine broom you don't want to you don't want it too rough and this will create a very nice finish nice looking slab so you guys let me know dry poured versus wet poured concrete um, I know there's a ton of videos out there right now on dry poured stuff everybody's pushing dry pour dry pour dry pour but I mean do you really know how strong that's going to be down the road do you really know if the concrete is evenly hydrated throughout the thickness of the slab are all the, did all the cement particles come in contact with water or moisture so they can properly harden uh, I mean I, I think you can all admit that with a dry pour you're not creating any type of a paste you're not creating a glue to 
you know, circle and circle the aggregate and circle this the sand, you know, to create a nice strong mix. There's no glue. You're not making any type of paste. You're just wetting the stuff. And yes, I mean concrete will get hard if you if you wet it, if you put moisture to it, because it will I mean the chemical reaction between cement particles and water will start to take place. But how even is that? You know, how even is that chemical reaction taking place? Is it are you over wetting the surface? I mean, if you if you add too much water to the surface of concrete, you're going to you're going to create a very high water to cement ratio right at the surface, which is going to weaken that. The concrete only needs so much water to hydrate. And if you overhydrate it, it's going to weaken it. And I've seen I've matter of fact, I've had some people call me and text me pictures of concrete that has uh, they've dry poured concrete and it's, fl it's starting to flake already and peel off on the surface. I'll show you some pictures of one right here. So here's one. You can see all the screed marks in it. There's still quite a bit of aggregate, but here's the peeling. I mean, you can't just add all kinds of water to the surface and expect the surface to be really strong. It's just going to weaken the surface so much that the paste or actually the cement particles at the surface won't even bond with the aggregate underneath it and that's really unfortunate that's a pretty big slab right there so you guys let me know what you think um are you gonna are you gonna continue to maybe do dry pour concrete or have you changed your mind you know i would definitely recommend doing a wet pour if you need help with that down in the description you can just get a hold of me i can try to help you out but again guys thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one